Hello everyone. I am going to show you a little behind the scenes editing today since 40% of you in the poll said that that's what you would like to see more footage of and I'm still chipping away at my next uh, feature length documentary Monsters and today I'll show you a section of it that I'm working on. And the tip and trick that you're going to learn today is using multiple uh, layers, different footage, and removing the background of one of them and replacing it with something else that you want. And we're going to do this by one, using multiple layers, and two, the draw mask tool, and three, the luma keyer tool. My goal is to take the Durban skyline and replace the sky behind it with a swimming shark. So you've got the foreground, but you have a new background. Have your footage ready. Um, I have multiple libraries open because I've got the footage from when we went to South Africa and filmed in Durban. And I also have footage from different shark trips I've gone on to use that shark footage in combination. So over here, let's just grab a section that I have and bring that down onto the timeline. And so there it is. Or we could use this one. Replace. <clears throat> or this one. Replace. And this one is kind of cool because it dramatically is heading in to the city. Um, that's Ollie Putnam flying the drone toward the Durban skyline. Personally, because I know I'm going to make a mistake several times, I make several copies. I've chosen this as the foreground, so I'm going to use it over and over and over again until I get it right. And I'm just going to use the Alt key and drag upward to put another layer there. And because I'm probably going to have to do this over, this bottom layer is just going to be a reserve. And I'm going to take yet another layer and go up here. Okay. So for now, let's cancel those out. I used the V key to uh, disable them. So now all I only have is this main one. Right. All right, so I'm going to come over here. You can see that I'm in transitions, which is not where I want to be. Let's come over to effects. I'm going to filter things down to make it faster and type in the word draw, which narrows it down to the draw mask. And I'm going to drag the draw mask on. Click to add a control point. All right, so when I take the mouse on here, you can see that I now have like an ink pen. And if I click, there is now a red dot. And what I'm going to do is make a rough outline of this skyline. I'm not going to make you watch all of this. Okay, I very roughly have the skyline. Now I need to get that entire section. And so I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to see 12% and off the screen. I'm just going to continue my control points. It doesn't matter how much bigger you make it because it's not on the screen. The important thing is that you come back over to the original point and click on it again. Boom. As soon as I do that, it has now officially selected the foreground and the background is gone. If I come down to this layer and enable it by clicking B again, now you see the sky, the original sky coming through. Just demonstrating what the mask has accomplished. But that's obviously not very cool, so we're going to put some shark footage in there. You see uh, Andy Casagrande's name here. He actually gave me some tiger shark footage to use in the film. For this particular section, I'm gonna replace this footage with uh, my own white shark footage, but um, very cool that Andy is going to have some of his tiger shark footage in the film. All right, I'm dragging this down, and believe it or not, this goes on the bottom not in between and you'll understand why in just a moment now because this middle layer is disabled you can see the water from the shark footage immediately now if i enable 
that middle layer, the shark footage is gone. We're going to now work with that layer and apply the Luma, Luma Keyer. Once again, I typed in this filter to make this faster and I apply the Luma Keyer to that layer and up in the right, you see the effects of the Luma Keyer for that layer. And now is when things get really fine tuned. You drag this over here and you can see in the actual footage how it affects it. Take the bottom one and drag it and you're seeing the water show up a little bit more. This gets more complicated. If you want to mess with it, go down to the mat tools and you see these levels, drag that and now I don't have the little white space in the middle. But obviously, no, I didn't not notice this, the city looks pretty crappy. That was a pretty terrible outline I did. And that's when things get complicated. This is when you need an intern or a lot of time and patience. So let's go back up to the top layer. You see all these control points. Well, it's not enough. Or is it too many? What do I mean? We'll get to that. For now, let's take this shark footage and bring it upward so that we can actually see the shark. That's a lot more interesting, isn't it? All right, and just increase the size because I don't want any chance of white stuff showing on the borders. Okay, so although it doesn't look great, we have officially accomplished what we set out to do. We have replaced the sky with a shark. All right, let me show you some that I worked on earlier. Already, now that it's blown up, you can see that there are quite a few problems. The bigger you make the screen, and you know, if this is gonna be shown in a theater, you're gonna be sitting there feeling pretty darned embarrassed seeing this effect on the big screen. This one, in some ways, looks better, but obviously you can see the shark and the water effect right through a few of the buildings. Let's get to another one. This one where the Luma is toned down a little bit almost looks a little bit more realistic, but notice something pretty drastic happening. That's that I tried to draw the buildings very, very particular, and you can see that the outline is no longer lining up. Well, that's because the drone is flying toward the city. Therefore, everything is moving and shifting. If you are just starting out with this effect, I highly recommend that you use a foreground that is not moving, because it's a pain in the butt. Let's explore why that's a pain in the butt. This footage is pretty dramatic. Um, getting this to work would be a challenge, but you can see right here, a very good example, and over here, of the outline from the mask tool shifting and making this very, very not pleasing to the eye. Here you can see a feather effect being used. You see how blurry it is around the edges? I'll show you how to use the uh, blur effect. But in some cases, it doesn't always make it better. You have to use your discretion. Now let me show you the feather tool real quick. So let's change the view to fit so it's a little bit bigger. And just watch the outer edge as I come over here and play with the feather. This one looks the best to me. It's not perfect, but of the ones I showed, it's the best. And interestingly enough, that is one that I had a less specific outline drawn. If I come over and I click on that, you see that the top layer outline is kind of rough. It's not even lined up. So why would that look good? If you compare the control points on this one, and I come over here and show you the control points that I drew, 
there are a lot more control points on this one. Now if I blow that up and hold it, you can see that I tried pretty hard to actually draw right around the tops of the buildings, which is great if you're willing to add keyframes every other second. Keyframes meaning you've got to come over here and you have to expand the control points and the transforms and every other second you have to add a keyframe here and here and reposition these key points. That's what I'm talking about. You need an intern or someone with more patience. So an alternative to that is to actually make the drawing less accurate and rely upon the Luma layer to cover up your laziness. Obviously this option over here is the one to do if you're willing to take the time to do it correctly. Or, or you could bypass all of that and do what I'm considering at the moment, which is a much more usable skyline. Here's this one, and the horizon pretty much stays the same. So we blow that up, and there's a tiger shark swimming through the sky with a sunset. You know, if, as long as you sell it as that's what you were going for, it's kind of cool. Now if I stop and show you the control points, look how much simpler that is. And I don't have any keyframes shifting around. Here's another drone shot where the horizon stays pretty much the same. Um, and the white shark, some white shark footage of mine from Guadalupe is going by. That doesn't look believable at all. Not that a shark going through the sky is believable. But, you know, you don't want your effect to be absolutely dreadful. I may not end up using this, but it did end up providing a pretty interesting uh, editing lesson. Here's a surfer that I filmed all by himself out at Montara Beach here in California. And that horizon stays the same. So pretty easy to put a kind of faded out white shark there. And then here's some surfers in Northern California all by themselves way out there. In this case, that's a drone shot, and there's the white shark swimming away and coming in again. So to recap, you're going to want three layers, four if you want a safety layer just to go back and start all over, which we're going to do here in a minute. And the top layer is your uh, draw mask layer. This layer is a copy of that layer in which you use the Luma Keyer, and then the third layer is the one that has the replacement footage. Let's take all of this and do one more thing that is important. Now let's say that I want the shark to appear in the sky over time, which I do, instead of it just being there immediately, and then I want the shark layer to take over the rest of it so then I just transition into showing underwater footage. Okay on the Luma Keyer effect you see a control point. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now it turned yellow so you know that uh, we've got one and If I drag over this way, you can't see the shark anymore. So let's let that be the first keyframe. Now, I hit the space bar so that the timeline will begin to move forward. And let's hit stop. And let's add another keyframe. And let's drag this back over. And there's our shark appearing. Oh, my computer is like on death's door here. I need a drink. Do not ask what time of day it is.
All right, let's blow that up. And I've got my beer now. The computer's had some time to render. And let's see how this is looking. And oh, there's a little bit of shark. But uh, there's a shark face coming at you behind the skyline. And there it's slowly taking over the screen. And from here, I can go into just shark footage. The only real problem there was the bubbles, which I felt took away. Oh, and we've got the leftovers of the shark's victim floating here. That's not really what I want people to see. Just kidding. I'm sure it was nothing. All right, so what happened here is that I took this footage and copied it up to here. I lowered the opacity on it down to zero. And then after enough time had gone by, by to where you could see the shark appearing in the background, I decided to start adding keyframes. And where is it? Right there we start. So you see the opacity is starting to change. And so I start bringing this into view which slowly takes over the skyline so now we are working with four layers we have the original shark footage on the bottom we have the luma key layer we have the draw mask layer and then we have a replica of the shark footage which we use the opacity effect in combination with all of these effects for it to take over everything and then I am going to change into just underwater footage. Boom! Hope this was helpful. I would love your support so if you like the Shark Minutes beanie you can get Shark Minutes beanies now, caps, um, shirts, and this of course is the They Go We Go Monsters Film t-shirt with the great white shark jaw and human skull and the skeletons dancing on the back and if and let me know if you enjoy these types of tutorials i know it's not for everyone but some of you really seem to be into it there is an entire playlist of these and now back to actually making the movie see you next time